personal protocol. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, how many how many supplements do you take on a day? A day is it like hundreds or tens? Fifty-two. 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 Oh, exactly. Yes. Only because I counted them like a week ago, I thought this is getting a little outrageous. Uh, the The problem is, is when you start taking, you do all this research, and you think, wow. This is an amazing molecule. How could I? How could I not take this? So you you add it to the protocol, and it just becomes normal, right? It's just part of your life. And then you know another few weeks go by, and you're on a different molecule because it takes it takes months to get through all this stuff. And you read something else, and you like, and you convince yourself that this is the most amazing molecule in the world. How could I live without that? So it gets added to the pile, and and then it just begets itself, right? But what I do do is I never take the full recommended dose of anything. So usually for any one given supplement, they'll say, you know, X number of milligrams, you have to take four of them a day. So I don't do that. I take one of everything a day. I mean, I try to make it a reasonable amount of milligramage, but I figure a little bit of a lot is better than a lot of a little. Right. And I'm not, I'm sure we could graph that. We could argue area under the curve, but it sort of simulates a more healthy longevity diet, right? I'm in this for the long haul. I'm going to age a little bit every day. So I'm going to try to anti-age a little bit every day in every possible way that I can. So I take 52 agents, but I take them in less in limited doses. Right. How often do you measure yourself, your markers? Um, when I started this, I did it every year. And I have to tell you, I haven't done it for a while because I couldn't make it look any better. It sort of seemed like, and, and a lot of the things that I'm worrying about, you can't measure anyway. Yeah. So as, as a crazy example of this, um, I shouldn't tell people this, but I, I do. I'm a junk food junkie. Um, I shouldn't be. Everyone talks about their caloric restriction diets and how they do this or don't do that. I am a junk food junkie. And I like to think that I've outsmarted my own system. And I don't know if that's true or not. I'm probably an idiot. Um, but I, there are three amino acids, for example, that attract glucose. Mm -hmm. So I use what I call the decoy system. If I know I'm going to be eating sugar, I down these three amino acids, hoping that it'll create, they'll bond, create an AGE that I'd then excrete versus the glucose actually affecting my collagen and causing me problems, which case I don't measure my hemoglobin A1C because I think it's not going to be accurate because it goes up and down like a yo-yo right? Because I'm, 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 I'm trying to outsmart the system instead of paying attention to the rules. Right. Interesting. You're um, probably like, oh my God, she's crazy. <laughs> it's, it, it's an interesting way of looking at it. But I mean, the thing is, if you measure the markers and the markers are good and you feel good, then it's working. Well, it's, it's gotta be working. Like I feel like I'm 20 years old. I sleep well, I'm a rock climber. I can, you know, I'm active as, a, as I've ever been. I have no physical complaints. I act like I'm an idiot. I'm, you know, I'm 20, I'm, but I, but I happen to be 53. So I think that it's working, you know, granted I'm an N of one, maybe I would have been this way anyway, but I like to think that I'm living evidence that this stuff works. And I got to tell you, Thousands of people around the world are on these protocols and I get nothing but confirmatory emails on a daily basis that, oh my God, this is amazing. But I, I got this one two days ago. It was fantastic. Someone had reached out to me. It was a, a married couple in their, I think they were seventies or eighties and, you know, had a list of complaints. And, and I said, okay, you know, I would recommend the following. And apparently they were so excited about it. They gave a book to their son. So their son sent me an email. Hey, I've got the following problems. What do I do? So I put him on a protocol. Well, now the, now the son's wife is, is calling me. What about me? I need a protocol too. They look so happy. So now I'm on the fourth person of the same family and they all seem to be thrilled. So there's just so much positive feedback that this stuff has got to be working to some degree. And if, if we're not increase, increasing longevity, at the very least, we're increasing health span, if not lifespan. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, health span is the topic. I mean, is the the goal really? Yes. Uh, it lifespan comes as a as a, a nice extra, as a side effect. Uh, so, on that kind of topic, so if people do want to get started and, and they they want some advice, how could they reach out to you? And, and kind of how does that work? 
So what it does, and, and, and so I don't know if people know who I am or not. Um, this, is, this is a hobby. This is an absolutely ridiculously out of control hobby. Um, I'm a pediatric anesthesiologist. I work in a hospital every day. I wear scrubs and I intubate and put IVs in people all day. This is what I actually do. Um, but I'm out to help people. So if people want to learn more about this, uh, number one, you can try getting a uh, book one and it sort of gives people a rough idea. There is a website as well. Uh, it's kaufmanprotocol.com. Uh, information on there is absolutely correct, but I will be adding more soon. Uh, book two is on the way, hopefully within the month, fingers crossed. It's up to my editor at this point. Um, if people get through all that and they're like, okay, I'm stuck, what do I do? Uh, they can email me. I am The email address is on my website. It's kaufmanaai at gmail.com. It's easy to find. And I answer all emails myself. I have no secretary. Sometimes my 15-year-old helps me. But beyond that, it is me, myself, and I. So if it's not an immediate answer, I apologize. Life is busy. But I do get to all emails eventually on my own. And I help people as much as I possibly can. So if someone can sum up their life's questions in 10 sentences or less, I will answer them for free on the email. Uh, if anyone wants something more complex than that, I do offer a consult service. Uh, it just takes me significantly more time. And I usually uh, look over people's labs, uh, films, whatever they want me to look at, go through medical histories, medications, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then there's a little bit of a fee because it just sucks up a lot of time. But then we have a, a conversation and we talk about people's goals and, and all that sort of thing. So I can, I can be found easily and I can help people rather easily. Excellent. Thank you. And so, and for the cons consultation, they would just email you on the same address. Yep. Yep. Do you, so you started, when you started, right, you, you said um, how no one was putting all of this information together to look at kind of anti-aging, which is why you had to create this post-it note uh, forest. So do you see that changing? I mean, aging seems to be more of a thing now or anti-aging. Uh, do you see other people thinking about that more? I, well, I think that it, that's a very complex question. I think that people, number one, live in silos. And there are some brilliant people out there, but I really am convinced that people live in silos and what they are personally interested in is what's the only thing to be interested in. Like, I love Bill Andrews to death. He's one of my very good friends. He's obsessed with telomeres, right? Telomeres is the answer to life. And he might be right. I, I, it's brilliant. On the other hand, I think that you age in other reasons as well. Right. And there are other brilliant people, but everyone has their their silo and everyone thinks that's the answer. And I think that I have one of the very few programs that looks at all of the problems and tries to figure this out in a multifaceted yet organized kind of fashion. So I think that I'm still sort of in a standalone category as far as that goes. Um, but since I started doing this, there are more answers now than we used to have. When I started this, there was no such thing as peptides. There were no exosomes. There were no stem cells. All of that was sort of like nutso or non-existent. Um, so in effect, the world of longevity is growing and I think it's just gonna build upon itself. And I like to sort of talk about the pyramid of longevity. And it's sort of like the, the pyramid of, of the foods that we were supposed to eat when we were kids in the lunch line, right? You get the ones the most common at the bottom, you know, so like the, you know. So I think that your longevity program at the bottom is all the supplements or agents that you take every day, right? And then less frequently, but not necessarily less important, or things that you would do less frequently, maybe. Um, peptide therapies, uh, all sorts of other things. Like I red light every day, so maybe that goes at the bottom, but maybe it should be layer two. Hard to say, right? Further up, I think that exosomes are amazing. I, I inject myself with exosomes once a month or so. Um, I think they make a world of difference. Uh, I think stem cells are up there as, as well, but I think that exosomes at this moment in time are better than stem cells. I don't want to get into a war about that because everyone has an opinion. And of course, at the pinnacle is gene therapy. And I think that's coming along, but it's not, it's not there yet. You know, kudos to Liz Parrish. She's a genius in this area. Um, but I don't think it's the complete answer. I think it's a piece of the longevity puzzle. Yes. So if you had a few minutes, could you talk about exosome? So I am, I kind of know what an exome is, but I've not ever heard of it in terms of having them injected. So could you 
So one of the ways a stem cell is beneficial is it creates these little vesicles, which are filled then with sort of things that are beneficial for you. And they can sort of engineer kind of what's in them in terms of growth factors, anti-inflammatories, you know, all, all these wonderful little things. Last time I looked, there's a list of like 60 different agents in this one exosome collection that I was looking at. Um, basically, basically they're sort of attracted to areas that are inflamed for the most part, but they travel around your circulation and they're like little tiny packets of goodness to make it in a really simplistic term. Um, you know, some people go with the stem cells to get the true stem cells. You got to go out of the country and, and there's also the, the, the legals and the cost and everything of that nature. But stem cells don't actually live very long within you. What they do do is they create exosomes. So in my sort of way of thinking about it, just go straight to the exosomes until they make the stem cells sort of system better. Um, you know, you can go to a physician. I just have them in my freezer. Um, I, I inject them sub Q into my face instead of PRP these days. And once a month, I just put them in an IV and run them in. Um, my body feels a ton better when I do it. Um, haven't seen any side effects. They're a little pricey beyond that. Okay. I, I will look that up. Uh, sorry, you used the acronym PRP. Mm -hmm. what, what does that stand for? So platelet reduced plasma. Um, right. Yeah. right. So what you, what this is, and they use this in the medical community, you extract someone's blood, you centrifuge it and you extract off the PRP and it's sort of concentrated growth factors and anti-inflammatory factors. And they use this to inject basically when you're trying to heal from surgery. So if you have like a tendon transfer or an ACL or something like that, your orthopod will just really do this while you're asleep and inject it. And it increases the, the rate of healing. Uh, sometimes they'll use it for sternotomy. If you've had chest surgery, um, they ladies now use it for something called a vampire facial and they'll do it. And then they smear it on their face and they do like the, the, the microdermabrasion. Um, it does, it, it increases healing, promotes growth, that sort of thing. Um, at one point, one of my designers was dying to try this on his balding spot. So we got a centrifuge, we did it and his bald spot got way better. We did it like once a month for about six or seven months and he did extremely well. So then I started injecting people's faces and the skin just rejuvenates. So this is not a whole body. It's, it's more like spackle, but it does make you look significantly better. Interesting. Great. Okay. Thank you. No, I didn't. I feel like she's not. Okay. PRP was, yes, I was not aware of PRP. Okay. So, um, Dr. Kaufman, uh, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us today. And I, it's been great talking to you. Um, really enjoyed it. And thank you so much for, for all the work you do. I mean, it's just like for a hobby, it, it's an ama it's amazing how much, uh, you have how much information you make available? Well, I, I'm, I'm happy to do it. And I think it's just absolutely intriguing and fun. And I wish I had all, I, ha, I wish I had more answers for you than I do, but I don't. Everyone has their like little niche of information. And as, as time goes by, I will have more and more information and I'm happy to dole it out at any point. The whole idea is just to be as, you know, healthy, happy and, and give to the community as much as I can. Excellent. Thank you so much. So I'm really looking forward to your book coming out. I will definitely read that when it's when it's available. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.